I'm going to try and cut the inefficiencies out of my work life. And I'll go over exactly how and why I plan on doing that. One, uh, the actionable how I'm going to do it and how I even started to realize this is I've been kind of apprenticing myself under this retired guy, Brian, that I've become just really good friends with. Uh, we actually just hang out. We're really good buddies. Uh, today we were driving his super fast Shelby, uh, which was sick throughout the desert. We we're going to go shoot some guns and have the highest testosterone day of all time. Then we grilled up some steaks at his apartment complex. But he's been kind of giving me a lot of incredibly valuable tips on the things that I need to figure out. It's kind of who do you surround yourself with in the proximity that I've seen had the biggest impact and value for the strides that I've taken, especially at a relatively young age. It's just been proximity and picking up things that these people do subconsciously. And Brian's really been helping me. Well, you you have to figure out the systems and cut out a lot of the inefficiency and hire the people that are doing the low skilled labor jobs that you are currently doing. He said, the only way you can do that is if you get the data for everything that you're currently doing. So I just bought some sort of software called rescue time that he recommended that is allowing me or will when I'm for, I got it today to track everything that I do on my laptop. And I'm going to try and do this with a lot of the team members that I have and plan on bringing on as well, because you can track are people actually doing what they say they're going to do. And then you kind of add that onto KPIs. So you can see how much time they're spending on something. And then are they getting the things done that they need to be getting done? Because the more data you have, the easier it is to make unemotional decisions. If you don't have any data deciding, well, does this drive more revenue or does it save time? What is it that we're actually doing here? You are just kind of running around blindly. You need structure. You need systems. And the way that you can progress this uh, exceptionally quickly is having the data that supports it. And that's kind of Brian's specialty. And that's what he's been kind of helping go over a little bit. And it makes, it makes a lot of sense because I've seen this with every super successful person that I work with. I work with hyper successful people. I mean, most of the businesses that I'm working with, they're doing 50 million plus per year. And <laughs> it's really exceptional. And they all prioritize the metrics that they're looking at for data because they aren't the people doing it. Like, what am I actually going to be looking at? I'm going to be tracking my entire work day on my laptop. One, I'll see that I'm doing a lot of things that I shouldn't be doing. That you just unconsciously, when you get in a bad habit, something happens, you're doing something that you don't necessarily need to be doing. You don't know that until you know. And so I'll know the things that I shouldn't be doing. And then I can work on cutting that actively out. And then it's what are the things that I'm doing that I can delegate? Brian keeps on telling me, dude, you need to hire a personal assistant. And I completely agree with him. That's a thing that I will 100% do very soon. But I need to know what it is that I'm actually having them do. And the only way I'll know that is if I know everything that I do, <laughs> uh, at least the things that I'm wasting time on. And if I get three to four hours, let's say, of my work day is done on things that can be easily delegated, that instantly needs to be get delegated because I should be prioritizing and focusing 99% of my time on the one thing that only really I can do right now. And that is very specialized work. And then once I, on, once, because I'll have all the data for what it is that I'm doing, I can then easily set up training regimes for the one thing that I'm doing to where I can expand and do more of it uh, and more of it at scale. I mean, that, that because that's what's going to drive revenue. I will understand what I'm doing that I shouldn't be, that I can delegate. I'll also understand what I should be doing or that I am doing that I shouldn't be doing and just cut out. Um, if you did this for 10 people, think about the productivity increases that would happen in your company. Let's say you're hiring someone and they're supposed to be working eight hours per day. Do you, like realistically, people probably aren't. So let's say you had KPIs for everybody and you, you let's say you had 10 people on your team. You had everyone have this software and let's say the average was 75 to 85% uh, work was being done during this eight hour long period. And that, that might be high, maybe it will be a little bit less. I'm just, I'm just making numbers up for the sake of making numbers. And let's say out of these 10 people, Let's say seven of them were working within this 
70 to 85 percent range one of them was working 95 percent, and then one of them was working 35 percent. so you'd have the extremes on both sides you would know that that one person definitely has to go and then you would know that that other person is a hyper motivated person looking to go 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 or they're trying to cheat the system and then you would look at are they getting the things done that they said they were going to be done so you would you would compile this on with um key performance indicators which is mutually agreed upon indicators where this is what I think I can re realistically accomplish doing my job. And here's here's the metric that we're looking at to track. This is the data that you're going to be collecting. Um, and do they get it done? We're going through this with Ken's business right now. We just had a pretty large meeting that I was involved in. And there were two people in there who they had a meeting. They said that they were going to do these things. And me and Ken were just going over it and saying, well, they aren't doing the things that they said they were going to do. And he said, well, that's how you know it's time to cut somebody. If you have a meeting, they're telling you, here's what I think we can accomplish. Here's what we need to do to accomplish it. And then they don't do it. Then, you know, things need to change. They need to change very rapidly. And they are probably not the person for the job because you shouldn't, if someone tells you they're going to do something and they show you why they're going to do it, and then they don't do it, they are not a good fit for whatever role that they have. It's really just increasing productivity of everybody. Um, if, if you keep people accountable, then the productivity is naturally going to go up or you're going to have to cut the slack. And that's something that I've, I'm, I'm terrible at. I have a hard time giving someone a task and then trying to figure out if they actually do it or not. That's something that I need to work on if I'm trying to be a leader. And if I want to hire, let's say 15 people, I need to have a sit down conversation with someone and say, okay, so what is it that we're going to track to know that we're actually moving in the right direction and we're not just doing nothing here? There has to be something that we are striving towards and not just hiring someone to hire someone. There, there's an editor that I'm trying to hire right now. And I need to think through what are the performance indicators that we are going to be doing to know if we are on the right productive scale.